Hey, Vinny, thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Jake Sarofman. I'm CMO of a company called Vizier. We're headquartered in Vancouver, Vancouver British Columbia. And um, we are the market share leader in a category called people analytics, um, which is often also referred to as workforce analytics. So you can think of it as really shining a light on your employees to understand um, how to hire better, how to retain them more effectively, how to compensate them fairly, how to understand performance. To summarize it, the way I like to think about it is we help you understand the impact people have on your business, but also the impact the business has on people to give you this holistic view by which you can lead your organization. So Vancouver, let me... Vancouver is a beautiful city, so you'll have to explain how that originated there. Yeah, it really is a gorgeous city. Not easy to get to. <laughs> um, I can tell you by experience, I'm based in North Carolina, but I love spending time there. The original technical and operational leadership of the company uh, comes from Crystal Reports and Business okay. Objects lineage. Yep. So that explains the Vancouver location. And it's just such a beautiful, livable city um, that it has continued to be our headquarters. Although we do have offices around the world, um, it is uh, very much the, the heart of the company. Cool. All right. So let me tell you a little bit about our story here. I like to start with just a little bit of common sense here. Um, business is nothing without your people. Um, people represent, in many cases, one of the largest um, line items on a budget and, and certainly what drives the creation of value for um, your customers and the delivery of innovation and, and the most strategic lever for driving change within your organization. Yet for a lot of companies, they're still flying blind and they have at best rudimentary understanding of their employees to capitalize on this resource in a way that allows them to predictably drive results for the business. The question I like to ask is, are you really, really seeing your employees? You know, as I said, at best companies have a cursory or rudimentary understanding of their organization, the ability to look in your HRIS system and understand um, their title band and understand how they're compensated and their performance rating and their um, reporting structure is not going to help you understand the full nuance of the human from the perspective of <clears throat> who they are and, and the results they're driving for your business and also what makes them a contributor to your culture and to the creation of value for your customers. So what if you could ask and answer the questions that reveal a true understanding of the people in your organization? And further to the point, what if you could understand the impact they're having on your business, what outcomes they're driving, how they're performing, what value they're creating, but also the impact your business is having on people with respect to their happiness, their engagement, their con contribution to value, their retention within your organization. We call this the human truth. Of course, I just That's okay. missed, missed um, my there. We call it the human truth, and, and we see a future where everyone who leads people can see that human truth. Again, it's this duality of both the impact people have in the business, but also the impact the business has on people, because people are not robots. And if you treat, treat it simply from the perspective of performance optimization, um, you're not going to get the result that you intend. You need to understand the whole person. So Vizier is so a- take, take when you as you're presenting, Yes. Right contrast because every major HCM vendor has some analytics, right? And then the planning vendors are starting to focus on not just financials, but also human units or you know people units or whatever you want to term term it. So talk about how you differentiate, navigate through that landscape. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, something like fifteen percent of employee data lives inside of your HRIS, whether that's a Workday or an Oracle or some only, other system. Only 15%? 15%. Whoa, whoa. That's so, quite a statement. Right? So the other data is captured within your employee engagement platforms, your payroll systems, 
There's labor market data externally. All of this data needs to come together to help form this, this view of your employees that's, that's really meaningful, that's insightful, that can drive better decisions and the right actions within your organization. You know, Jake, Jake you mentioned this um, in, from one of my books. Uh, I want to contrast how the employee master has evolved over the last few decades. So I sent Dave Duffy a note and I said, Dave, do you have a copy of your first employee master record? Okay. And he didn't, he couldn't find it. I wanted to see what 40 years ago the employee master record had, you know, basic information like home phone number or right. spouse information and so on, to now where you have all kinds of uh, you know, Twitter handles and God knows what all data points and GPS data of home and <laughs> take yeah. a lot of stuff we could we could if privacy allowed us to collect. Yeah, hundred percent. It's very similar, and I see where we're going with this. It's very similar to the what we've experienced in the customer revolution and the transformations that companies have made to better understand their customers. Similarly, they need to better understand their employees. Um, to anticipate and fulfill their needs, to better, um, to derive more value from the relationship in the same way that we thought about customer relationships. And that depends on data. And a lot of that data is just not organized, it's not available, it's not accessible. And it's really difficult to derive meaning from that insight to drive better decision making. And, and that's really the role we play. We capture, we, we, we will ingest the data wherever it lives on average. Our customers are integrating to seven to say 12 different systems where people data lives. We normalize it, we standardize it, and we deliver it as a set of insights um, to anyone who needs it to make better decisions, whether that's the HR team, HR business partners, people managers, executive teams. Um, and one of the things that I, I failed to mention, and it's a key differentiator of this year, is that we pre-built 2,000 plus questions and corresponding analytic models to answer these questions. So this is not a custom build platform. This is very different from what you'd expect from a, a general purpose business intelligence platform. This here is um, an analytic application that is built around understanding people with 80 to 90% of the questions you'd ever need to ask available out of the box, which is, we think, very disruptive to time to value. You could have Vizier stood up in six six weeks where a custom build project could take you six to 12 months uh, just to have some of the basics in place. And then we also have a very extensible model that allows you to create custom questions and extend our data model um, for the things that are not available out of the box. Also importantly, we connect that people data with operational data that run your business. So tell me a couple of funky use cases you've seen. You know, by funky, I mean, you know, if somebody say, hey, look, I want to send somebody to Croatia, run a quick query, tell me how many people have lived or worked in Croatia. Is that a, kind yeah, of, sure. is, that a is that a pretty normal query people would use in your system or is it kind of a outlier? No, it's not an outlier. Um, and that that right there is a very good example. Thinking about um, office consolidation, thinking about expansion, thinking about um, hybrid work. That's been a very hot use case recently is um, virtually every CEO I've encountered has a bias toward in-office work because it is supportive of a healthy and vibrant culture. And because there's just a certain comfort that comes from feeling the energy of your team doing work. Um, and being together in one space. And I think part of that's legitimate, but it's also, that's a that's a very subjective, intuitive argument. And our customers in are, are starting to pull badge scan data into Vizier so they can start to look at things like performance and happiness and engagement and retention risk based on different work modalities, people that are in the office versus people that are at home and starting to figure out what's the right policy to shape around this that drives the best outcomes for both the business and for the employee. I'll tell you a funny story on the hybrid. So you're, you're ex-Gartner, I'm ex-Gartner. Uh, George Colony, the CEO of Forrester, 
Mm -hmm. Never had a work from home policy. And Gardner, yeah, I was one of the first work from home analysts. Yep. Last year he relented. He said, okay, I'm going to open up. I should have done it a while ago. But when he announced it, he said, the reason CEOs like people to come in is it's an ego thing. They had the, all these big buildings and they want them all filled up. <laughs> I think I think there's some truth to that. I really do. I, it was kind of ironic that he's saying, I'm allowing people to go, but my peer CEOs. <laughs> right. And if people are not going to come in, why carry the cost? So, and that's another use case is facilities management and really thinking about optimizing real estate spend. In today's economy, you know, the, the restructuring is a sad reality is that there are layoffs, but companies that are not leading with data and understanding whether they're cutting into the muscle of the organization and what impact it's going to have on the outcomes that they need to drive to sustain growth are creating a lot of risk for the business, not only today, but as importantly tomorrow during the rebound. You know, recessions last, what, 12 to 14 months in duration. So as soon as you're through one cycle, you're starting to step into the next one. Um, so you it, can, it, I mean, the, an the limit. limit. Facilities management, use case I learned in the last couple of months. I've been working with SAP on a project in the fleet manager, because SAP, um, one of the perks is you get a car, if you've been an employee at least two years, but three years, every three years you get a new car. So I talked to the fleet manager, fascinating. They have 600 charging stations. They wow. have to plan for every three year rollover. And now it's through their planning for how many can be EV. We can ac accelerate the EV penetration of that fleet and so on. So a great facilities management. Talk. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. You know, another use case that, that I really love is understanding the people impacts on things like sales performance or customer success score or customer satisfaction ratings, um, for example, and being able to predict what are the impacts of resignations and what are the impacts of, 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 of staffing considerations on the results that you need to drive for the business. And that's where when you start bringing people data together with the operational data that runs the business, you can start to see these things with a lot of clarity and make better decisions about how you think about the timing of hiring, how you think about retention programs, because you can see specifically how it's going to impact the results for the business. So that's the Vizier story. What makes us different? I mentioned disruptive time to value. Very, very simple. Um, we create uh, a, a catalog of of pre-built questions, corresponding analytic models. We can stand this up in a very short period of time. And we don't have to build an army of people, uh, analysts around it. Um, we just give you that leverage uh, on your current teams to deliver the sort of insights that the, the company needs in a way that is uh, very, very scalable and very secure. And we recently were very proud to have been named <laughs> number one in vendor satisfaction and user experience by Sapient Insights in the recent annual HR industry survey, um, competing against you know all the other analytic and workforce planning products that you'd know in the market. So um, our customers really, uh, really, really get value from the product, really like it, and it's uh, very simple and adoptable. I mentioned connecting business outcomes to people. So the ability to connect the dots and correlate uh, people data with business data or operational data to make better decisions on the basis of how it's going to impact the business. And then the ability to uh, democratize these insights out to the front lines. We have customers um, where the vast majority of managers have this data in their hands and they can use it around hiring, um, retention programs, compensation, um, um, merit increases, and, and the list goes on. Um, and, and doing it in a way that's very secure because, of course, people data is um, extremely sensitive, um, probably among the most sensitive classes of data within any organization. And we built an extremely robust 
security model that allows this to be scaled the way that honors um, access and privileges uh, across a very diverse user base. Here's that survey I mentioned, I won't belabor it, um, but you can see some of those other vendors that you may be familiar with and how they fared from a UX and vendor SAT perspective. We're very proud of this. This was just published uh, in the last couple of weeks. And Josh Burson, who's one of the leading, leading analysts in HR tech uh, has also recognized as clearly the market leader in this, in this category. Josh, um, Josh has been in my one of my video episodes. Oh, nice. He's a great guy. Yep. The last 25 years, and I alluded to this, have been really focused on the customer. You know, how do we um, improve how we attract, convert, retain, and grow the lifetime value of customer relationships has been our collective obsession as, um, as an industry. And that's led to what? Eight, ten thousand vendors. This is the infamous Scott Brinker eye chart. The medium is the message at this point because I can't pick out a single logo in there, but I think it makes a statement nonetheless. It's a very cluttered space, all targeted on the long tail of customer journey. Yeah, this was a recent article published in HBR where they looked at the pattern of topic and thematic trends over the last hundred years of publishing, and you can see that ops and finance fell off a cliff. Sales and marketing and strategy, customer-related topics climbed very steeply. <clears throat> and we've also seen HR and, and uh, leadership topics sort of decline and now rebound. Um, it's certainly not um, perfectly uh, aligned to the claim that the next 25 years will be about the employee. But when you think about the structural shifts in the labor markets, when you think about the changing power dynamics between employees and employers, when you think about the change necessary to drive the next waves of innovation and competitive advantage for companies, when you think about the skill shortages, all this points to the fact that this is becoming a massive mega trend that we think will um, manifest on, the, on an order of magnitude similar to what we've seen over the last 25 years. Jake, the only the only thing I would point out here is that they probably didn't look at enough, enough categories. If you look at certain industries, smart assets, robotics, <clears throat> automation is one of the hottest topics, right? It's and accelerated because of the HR issues, like yes, the great resignation and so on. And then in some other industries, you're seeing new business models, new networks, just huge interest in that. So. You make a good point. You know, HR is certainly employee-centric. Uh, information data has been neglected, so it's getting attention. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't jump to a world conclusions as that's the only one. Yeah, of course you're right. I think there's um, there's a lot of truth to what you're saying. We think it's on a an upward climb. It's growing in importance, um, but uh, it's not the only thing. I completely agree with you. But to your point, the previous chart, the the ten thousand, the ten thousand CRM, um, I should have used this. I was pre presenting to somebody on how horizontals, CRM, HCM, finance, and all that have gotten a little too much VC money. Mm -hmm. I should have used this slide. Oh my God! I mean, it's crazy. They, they're like. Following on herd, right? <laughs> it's madness. It's absolute madness. Um, and and the reason we think that this is so important is because people are particularly vulnerable to these macro shifts that we see happening in the world. These unpredictable changes, and being able to manage through those, whether it's the pandemic, uh, social reckoning in America and globally, really the great resignation, the recession that we're stepping into, whatever comes next requires data. This is no area to fly blind, no area to guess or rely on intuition. Um, many of the largest companies in the world use Vizier. We have two primary lines of business. The first is selling directly to large companies like these. And we also have an embedded business where we sell OEM style through a number of uh, HR tech 
SaaS products. Um, the combination of both um, allows us to um, take credit for 25,000 customers today, um, almost 20 million employee records under management through the combination of our direct embedded business. Um, the, the embedded business, do they only have the, the channel? Does it have access to your code or also your data? Both. Both, okay. okay. Both. Yeah, so that's been a significant driver of our benchmark data, which I didn't talk about. But that's a, also a differentiator for us and very valuable is being able to understand what good looks like um, for um, companies that are similar in size, industry, geography, et cetera. Are the, is the benchmark data like Hackett Group used to do that level of granularity or is it a higher level? It's pretty granular. Yeah, and a subset of it is actually available for free to non-customers at vizier.com. So we make some of it available and you can go in there and explore it. So that's it. That's our story. Jake, you did a great job. I used more of most of your 20 minutes. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I appreciate the opportunity. It's been fun to chat. Thank you for uh, making the presentation. And, um, you know, us, us as analysts uh, can't can get rid of us. No, that's <laughs> true. That's true. <laughs> the world may try, but they won't. And and the fact that George Colony has accepted that some of us don't want to live in in Connecticut is is a huge victory for us. <laughs> Stanford, Connecticut's a beautiful place. Parts of it. Parts of it. Um, Weather's a little rough. Every city has its ups and downs, you know. So, for sure. For sure. All right, Jake. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Thank you. Talk to you soon.